The House of Squib presents Academy Awards. Every week, Squib brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses, techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. And now, E.R. Squibb and Sons, manufacturing chemists to the medical profession since 1858, bring you two well-known Hollywood stars, the distinguished actor and film producer, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., and lovely Virginia Bruce. You will hear Mr. Fairbanks and Miss Bruce in the romantic drama, The Prisoner of Zenda, on tonight's Academy Awards. If you were to visit this delightful kingdom, you would take the Orient Express, Paris, Vienna, Strelsau, Bucharest, and Constantinople. If you were going to the coronation, you'd get out at the capital, Strelsau. If you were Rudolf Rassendel, of the famous English family of Rassendels, and were bent on having a holiday in this picture book kingdom, you'd get off in the province of Zenda. You read the sign which said, Province of Zenda, Royal hunting and fishing preserved, trespassing forbidden by order of His Majesty the King. Being Rudolf Rassendel, you'd pick the choicest waters, fish to your heart's content, and then lie on a grassy bank and fall asleep. You'd hardly know or care that two of the King's henchmen were bending over you in astonishment and alarm. Hmm, remarkable resemblance. Shave him and he'd be the King. It is incredible. Uh, he's awake. So... Uh, may I ask your name? Uh, you started this, gentlemen. Suppose you give me the lead in the matter of names. This is Colonel Zapt, and I am called Fritz von Thalenheim. Huh. We are both in the service of His Majesty the King. Well, I am Rudolf Rassendel, traveling from England, and not so long ago in the service of Her Majesty Queen Victoria. Rassendel? Then we are all brethren of the sword. Rassendel, by heaven your face betrays you, sir. Uh, you know the story, of course? Oh, I heard something of it. Fritz! Fritz! Where are you? Here, Your Majesty. Confounded, I thought I'd lost you. I, uh, Colonel Fritz, who is this gentleman? Uh, he's by way of being a relative of yours, sir. Relative? I don't understand. Well, it's something for which you cannot entirely blame me, Your Majesty. Well, then who is to blame? Well, if I may hazard a guess, Your Majesty, I would say that the blame might lie equally between your great-great-great-grandfather Rudolph and <laughs> my great-great-great-grandmother Amelia. What? Rights, by heaven. The man's a Rassendel from England. And since Amelia's time, sire, the elf bird face crops out on one of us every now and then. Oh, I see. Well, well, met cousin. You must forgive me if I was unduly surprised. It's too early in the day for a man to see double, eh, Fritz? <laughs> Confounded, sir. It's not every day a man meets his double face to face. Well, what are you doing here, cousin? Tell me, what are your plans? No plan, sire, but to fish. Oh, but you must come to my coronation tomorrow. I'd give a thousand crowns for the sight of my brother Michael's face when he sees the pair of us. <laughs> and another thousand crowns, I'd wager, that he couldn't tell us apart. But, of course, you, you don't know my brother Michael. I'm afraid, sire, I haven't had that honor. Sire, I question the wisdom of Mr. Rassendil's going to Strelsau tomorrow. He mustn't go. Come, gentlemen, I have not said he is to go. Sire, I shall leave the country immediately since your advisors think it is <laughs> advisable. No, by thunder, you shan't. You must stay at my hunting lodge. Our train for the coronation, sire, is to be ready at seven in the morning. Very well. Since Zapt won't let, uh, won't let you see our coronation, Cousin Rudolph, we shall do our best to make up for it on the night before. Come, sir. I think you will find our table adequate and our, <laughs> our wine cellar somewhat inexhaustible. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. Quickly. Uh, what's, what's the joke? This is no joke, Englishman. 
Well, it was quite an evening, wasn't it? <laughs> Hello, is Majesty still asleep? Yes, asleep. Well, what happened? Yosef, the servant, found him on the floor this morning. You didn't drink any of that last bottle? Well, not that I know of. Oh, my head. I think you'd know it if you had. Why, was he drugged? It was. Well, uh, have you had a doctor? None within ten miles. But a thousand doctors wouldn't take him to Strelsau today. Oh, I know the look of it. He'll not move for six or seven hours yet. But I remember laughing at a joke his majesty told, and then I sat down here, and I suppose I went fast asleep. <laughs> you know, I'm not much of a wine drinker. Mm, his majesty is. Uh, you missed the drug bottle. But who could have... Michael, won his half-brother. He wants the throne. But the coronation today... There isn't going to be a coronation. Well, can't they postpone it? Can't you send word he's ill? Oh, they know his illness too well. He's been ill before. Michael is waiting in Strelsau now with half the army already on his side and half the people too. It's the moment he's been waiting for, planning for, counting on the king's weakness. Yes. Yes, Colonel, what's the matter? Englishman, I am much older than you. As a man grows old, he comes to believe in fate. And fate sent you here. And fate sends you now to Strelsau. What? Sounds mad, doesn't it? But without your beard, I'd wager you could deceive your own brother. Oh, you must be out of your mind. Ah, it's a risk against a certainty. My dear Colonel Zapt, I'm a simple Englishman. I couldn't even begin to act like a king, even if I tried. I'm afraid not, gentlemen. Mm, then Black Michael sits tonight on the throne, and the king lies in prison or his grave. Hmm. Well, after all, it... It would only be for today, wouldn't it? Tonight you shall be safely across the border. King for a day. And what would it mean if... if I fail? Your life and mine, and uh, Fritz is here. Confound it, I've... I've become awfully fond of this beard. Rassendel, your hand. Good. We'll have Josef shave you. And then you must dress immediately in the king's dress uniform. Take that picture of him as your guide. Right. And as for his majesty, God keep him. Joseph will guard him with his life. I, Rudolph with justice and mercy to deal sovereignty, to guard with vigilance and honor the welfare of my people, from all enemies to defend them, and from the throne of my ancestors to bear faithful rule, all this do I swear. Everything went off very well, didn't you, Princess Flavia? That is, for a coronation. That is, I mean to say, a, a coronation should go off well if the king puts in an appearance, properly dressed, knowing his line. And sober. Oh, that's a nasty one. <laughs> Don't you think you might overlook my um, past behavior and unbend a little? Don't, don't the people want to see how well we get on together, uh, since we are to be married? Why should we deceive them? You know, I think the luckiest man in the world is the king of this country. Really? You have always seemed to prefer Paris. Ah, but now I'm the anointed and crowned king. New leaf and all that. <laughs> I have rather neglected you, haven't I? Two picture postcards in three years. Yeah, that, that, that was pretty silly, wasn't it? <laughs> Staying away from you so long, and all the time you were changing into the loveliest princess in Europe. No, no, the loveliest girl in Europe. Your dynastic obligation to the princess royal doesn't compel you to say nice things to her in private. You call this private, riding along the boulevard in a carriage? I must indeed have changed since you saw me. I've been thinking the same about you. You really looked and acted like a king today. Oh, thank you. Something I confess few of us expected of you. Oh, well, you see, when I looked at you, it seemed time for this king to settle down and try to live up to his, his future queen. I think all this ceremony has gone to your head a little, cousin. I go fishing, I'm crowned king, I meet the loveliest, the most beautiful... Your Majesty, this is the palace. We are expected to leave the carriage and enter the palace. You to go to the balcony and greet your subjects. I, um, I 
I think the crowd expects us to get married quite soon. And I think they have there what I consider to be a marvelous idea. <laughs> Your hand, princess. I think, Your Majesty, you should receive your minister. Oh, bother my ministers. I want to talk to you. You were saying? Very well, then. I was asking you what the world outside was really like. Is it as wicked and exciting as it seems in novels? And what did you do on those long trips? I mean, when you weren't drinking. Well, I, I used to go fishing. Fishing? You used to tell me you despised fishing. <laughs> oh, well, I, I grew out of that. Whooping a fine stream after a big fellow who jumps and laughs at you. Oh, fly fishing. I've never got beyond the hook and worm stage. Oh. And speaking of worms, do you remember the day you dropped a caterpillar down my back? <laughs> oh, what a dreadful young fiend you were. <laughs> Was I? Who's there? Sire? Well? His Highness, Duke Michael, is waiting to pay his respects, sir. Forgive me, my dear, for deserting you then. I shall make the audience as short as possible. My princess, will you be waiting? Your Majesty, I shall be waiting. I shall be counting the seconds until I can return. Rassendel, Colonel Zapt, what's the matter? Don't go in there, yet. <laughs> oh, but Colonel, I'm, I'm the king and my ministers are waiting, including my half-brother, Michael. Wait, this is nothing to joke about. We plan to leave at once and bring back His Majesty by daylight. Yes. That devil Rupert of Hensau, Michael's lieutenant, found the king at the lodge. His men murdered Joseph and the guard and kidnapped the king. Oh. Well, that is all over. They know everything. Aye, they know everything. But they can't speak. How can they denounce us without denouncing themselves? Well, that still won't keep them from murdering the king. With you on the throne, they won't dare. If they do, they're finished. They can kill him and leave you on the throne. Oh, it's too much to ask. Nobody could carry on this masquerade. I've tried to help you all I can, but, but I'm also not a fool. Oh, yes, I suppose you're right. But I have a feeling about my king, about the crown. I feel about it the way another man would feel, uh, well, about his children or the woman he loved. He would hate to leave her to her fate without making a fight. What fate? Whose fate? Can you ask that of a soldier whose king is kidnapped, perhaps murdered? You know whom I mean. Oh, the Princess Flavia. With the king dead, Michael as regent will declare her the queen. After that, of course, he'll marry her. She'd never do that. She couldn't. Flavia is a princess of the royal house. She would have no choice, and she would expect none. Well, you can't let that happen to her. Can you? <laughs> In just a moment, you will hear the second part of Academy Award. In real life, just as in a movie plot, pleasant surprises are always welcome. Like the surprise of discovering that even brushing your teeth can be a refreshing experience when you brush them with squib dental cream. You can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. For squib dental cream wakes up your whole mouth with flavor as refreshing as frosted mint. Its refreshing action leaves your teeth and gums feeling clean as a breath of mountain air. And watch your mirror for a refreshing difference in your smile. For the polishing agent in pure squib dental cream is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective known to dental science. So begin every day the refreshing way. Brush your teeth regularly with squib dental cream, one of the great family of squib products. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Use Squib Dental Cream. Before we bring you part two of The Prisoner of Zenda, we want to thank David O. Selznick Productions for making this story available. David O. Selznick Productions are also producers of the Technicolor picture, Duel in the Sun. And 
now the House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Virginia Bruce in The Prisoner of Zenda. What is it? Michael's man's here. Count Rupert of Hensoff. That villain, tell him his majesty's indisposed. No, we'll hear what he has to say. Send him in. But disarm him. Very well. Send him in. His majesty will see him. Your majesty. I bring your brother's humble greetings. And I also bring you an offer. From Michael? Yes. He offers you money. Oh, how much? I prefer to speak to you in private. No. Can it be, Colonel Zapp, that you do not trust the king? I do not trust you. I bow to your patriarchal wisdom, Colonel. But my offer concerns only the king. Very well. Walk with me towards the window. We can converse privately enough, I think. Well, what does Michael propose? He offers you 100,000 pounds to pack and take safe conduct over the border. <laughs> You're something of a wit, Hensel. Mm, I told Michael you'd refuse. The fact is, between ourselves, Michael doesn't understand a gentleman. <laughs> but we do, Hensel, don't we? Razendel, you're a man after my own heart. Now, here's my plan for us. Disregarding Michael, of course. Oh, Michael's such a bore. Listen, all you need do is to attack the castle boldly. The castle where Michael has the king prisoner. Go on. Black Michael will fall. The king... You don't want to find him. You won't. That's provided for. Only you and I are left who knows the truth. Understand? I, Rupert of Hensel, and you, the king of the realm. Hmm. Aren't you being a little unfair to Michael? Perhaps a little, but I can't put up with his jealousy. Jealousy? Jealousy of me and his charming mistress, Antoinette. Ah, and you're doing all this for love. How romantic. Well, love... And your majesty's gratitude throughout your long and happy reign. Ah. And then, of course, you might make over to me Michael's uh, castle and his estates. A very clever scheme. Does you credit? Shall we shake hands, then? <laughs> you. Why, you. <laughs> Do you hear the man zapped? He's marvelous. All right, Englishman. And die. Sure, look out. His knife. Stop him. Guard. Guard. Sorry, I missed. A pity. We'll meet again, Englishman. After him. Shoot, you fool. Shoot to kill. <laughs> Colonel, you heard what Hensal said of the castle and the king? Yes. We know where the king is now. And we know how we're to get into the castle. How? Our secret police made contact with Michael's mistress. She is in the castle now. Her servant, Johan, is one of our men. He tells us she is afraid that if Michael succeeds, he will marry Princess Flavia and leave her. And she wants the plot to fail. Good. She reports that this Johan will lower the drawbridge two hours past midnight. But the lawyers, the king will be killed at the first alarm. Yes, yes. But she says that before the bridge goes down, one of us must swim the moat, climb into her room. That man alone must hold off the guards for murdering the king until Johan can lower the bridge and let our armed men into the castle. Tonight there are two guards with the king and Count Rupert of Hensau. Ah, I think I should be the one to swim the moat. Right, lad. We can't afford to lose both our kings. One king you'll lose tonight. If anything happened to the king and not to me, your game is up anyway. I've been an imposter for his sake... I could not be one for my own. I swim the moat, Fritz, not you. But if we lose you both, what will become of those of us who are left? They will serve Queen Flavia. And I would to God I could be one of them. I understand that we cannot amuse Your Majesty here in Strelsau. But you are leaving tonight for Zenda to hunt boars. Boar hunting? Who told you that? I heard from Colonel Zapt. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Yes, but do you think I want to go? I'm sure not. It's the boars. They're simply pining for you to hunt them. Did they send a delegation for you? <laughs> Perhaps the boars will hunt me. Perhaps, Flavia, they'll catch me. Oh, you're not even touched by that danger, are you? <laughs> this is the way you used to be. But not like the king I've come to love. <laughs> 
Oh, my darling. Did you dream I was leaving you to go hunting? Are oh, you not going? Well, I'm not going hunting. That is, not just for boar. Then what are you... Rudolph, it's Michael. Oh, it's nothing. It, it seems he has hatched a lurid little plot at Zender. But I won't let you go. Send someone else. And what sort of a king would do that? I don't understand. And I cannot tell you yet. But believe me when I say there are reasons why I must go. I'm sorry. You see, I've never been in love before, Rudolph. You'll come back soon. Shan't a man come back to the loveliest lady in all the wide world? A thousand Michaels couldn't keep me from you. But if I shouldn't... Rudolph. Stop, will you never, never forget me? Never. And would you be a brave queen and do your part? My life would be empty. My heart dead. But you would do your part. Au revoir. Rudolph. Colonel Zapt, give the order and we'll storm Michael's castle. Easy, lad. He hasn't lowered the drawbridge yet. He's dead, I tell you. It's been an hour since he swam the moat and scaled the wall. We were betrayed. I know it. We'll never get into that fortress. Have patience, Fritz. I'm Rudolph Rassendil. Too late. Too late. Oh, Antoinette, what do you mean? Look. You've killed Michael. Michael is dead. Who killed him? Rupert of Hensel. Oh. I had him come to my room to get him out of your way. Michael surprised us. He killed Michael. He killed your husband. He knows the plot. The cause is lost. Oh, where is the king? Quickly, where is the king? He's in the dungeon. Two guards. Take Michael's sword. Beware of Rupert. Mind you, men. The first son of alarm stabbed the king and dropped him into the river. I'll deal with the others. You may have company, though I doubt they'll be able to storm this fortress. Aye, we shall take care of the king. Good. I'll have a look from the battlements. Keep your wits about you. How is the king? Oh, he'll do. Water. Water, please, water. <laughs> yes, he'll do. Shut up, you. I'll give you water. I'll... Look out! It's the foreigner! Cousin Rudolph. Cousin Rudolph. Courage, Majesty. I'll have the drawbridge down in a moment. Courage, sire. Only Rupert stands on our side now, in our way, and he's above on the battlement. <laughs> oh, no, he isn't, imposter. Rupert! So you killed the guard. Very daring of you, Rassendil. But now it's my turn. You've played right into my hands. Now I'll be rid of the both of you, the king and his bothersome double. Oh, no, you don't. Stand and fight. I'll give you your fencing lesson, Englishman. I'll take my lesson in my own way. You fight like a peasant. I'll fight you any way you wish when the bridge is down. Zap, come on, charge the bridge. Good work, imposter. Now pay for it. I must know. Tell me, I command you. Rassendel lives. Wounded, yes. But he saved the king. And this Rupert of Henso? Escaped. The man is a devil. Where is... Where is... Rassendel, come. He is waiting. There. <gasps> Rudolph, my darling. You're hurt. 
I love you with all my heart and soul. But forgive me for the wrong I've done you. It would have made no difference if I'd known. It was always you, never the king. I meant to tell you. I tried to on the night of the ball. I know. What are we to do now, Rudolph? I'm going away. Tonight. Oh, no, no. No, you can't. Oh, my darling. Come with me. Oh, no, no. I'm mad. Oh, no, I love your madness, dear. For one lovely moment, I too was mad. But is love the only thing? If it were, I could follow you to the end of the world. For you hold my heart in the hollow of your hand. But if love were the only thing, you would have left the king to die in his cell. Honor binds a woman too, Rudolph. I don't know why God has let me love you. But I do know that I must stay. I think God shows his purpose to such as you. Your heart will always be in my heart. The touch of your lips on mine. Your heart will always be in my heart. The touch of your lips on mine. My queen. My love. My love. And my true knight. My darling. Fate doesn't always make the right men king. Goodbye. Goodbye, my darling. Whenever you see the name Squib on a product, a name you can trust, you will also see a number you can trust. It is called a control number, and it plays a vitally important part in safeguarding the uniformity, purity, and efficacy of the Squib product you are about to use. For by that control number, Squib records in detail not only every step in the processing of a product, but the source and exact characteristics of every component even to sterile distilled water when it is used. In fact, so complete are the records that using the control number as a key, you may even uncover a detailed report of the weather on the day when special product tests were made. It is for your protection that the House of Squibb takes such care in producing not only life-saving medicinals, but also the simple health essentials you buy for your home use. And you'll be delighted to find when you ask your druggist how many of these Squib makes for you. To be sure you get Squib quality when you're buying for your medicine cabinet, ask for Squib, a name you can trust. Next Wednesday, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Award starring Joel McRae in Foreign Correspondent. Today's performance of The Prisoner of Zenda was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Lee Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. is soon to be seen starring in the RKO Technicolor production, Sinbad the Sailor. This is Hugh Brunday, bidding you good night until next Wednesday at the same time, when you're invited to listen again to Academy Award, presented by the House of Squip, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.